so welcome to the fourth lecture of module 5 so in the module uh, sorry in the, in the last lecture uh, we have seen the basics of a dc potentiometer that is the principle of operation of a dc potentiometer and we have seen what is a slide wire potentiometer so one disadvantage of slide wire potentiometer is that it is having see the, the slide wire is of course having a length of 200 centimeters so you can see you can you can just uh, imagine the size or the length of that potentiometer so it is not practical it's not a practical thing for this to, to size to, to carry such a uh, that's such a long thing so so basically for application purpose or for commercial purposes or for laboratory purposes always we prefer a potentiometer with lesser size so laboratory type potentiometers we have a different type of construction we'll see that today and uh, we'll see one more thing that is volt ratio box also and if time permits i will go through the uh, one of the application of a dc potentiometer so in the last class we learned about the operation of a dc potentiometer <coughs> where we learned about the procedure of standardization and then the procedure then how we operate the potentiometer to calculate the unknown em so what is standardization so standardization is simply to fix a working current so if we fix the working current as 10 milliamps there so i also pointed out the advantage of fixing that 10 milliamps that is if it is so we assume that for a 200 centimeter length wire slide wire per centimeter we are having per centimeter we are having one ohm resistance so one ohm resistance per centimeter means 200 centimeter of a wire will have 200 ohms resistance so in keeping that in mind we have seen that that is for by for, by uh, setting 10 milliamps current for an unknown voltage of 1.0186 volt then we'll get a length of 101.86 so having a length of 101.86 centimeter then we can easily say that the unknown voltage is 1.0186 voltage this is how we started and imagine there is some other length we have some other unknown emf so so uh, we we scrolled the slide wire through the slide wire using a jockey and at a length of 153.6 centimeters the galvanometer showed null deflection then immediately we can fix that this length points to 1.5 536 volt if it is 160 centimeter then immediately you can tell that it is 1.6 volt if it is 180 centimeter then you may immediately you can tell that it is 1.8 volt so that is how a slide wire potentiometer work and today we'll see what is a laboratory type it is of course known as a cromptons potentiometer so it's a cromptons potentiometer so it is it came into practice um, existence because of the awkward length of the slide wire potentiometer and we'll see how it looks like so this is more or less compact in uh, nature so we have uh, this is the same construction same thing and we have again two uh, 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 two operation that is two modes of operation that is in calibrate mode of operation and the operate mode of operation and uh, <clears throat> here we start our discussion fixing our current as 10 milliamps so we have to fix the 10 milliamps current by the procedure of standardization but we are moving on with the uh, the imagination that or we are moving on with a condition that our working current is necessarily 10 milliamps in that case we have see the construction so we have two dials one is a stepped dial this is called a dial switch and the other is a continuous dial this is called a slide wire this is again a slide wire and this total resistance is 150 ohms this dial switch is having a total resistance of 150 ohms and uh, it is having 10 steps so this is one step this is step number two step number three likewise this is step number 15 so sorry uh, uh, how many steps ah 15 steps so 15 steps so then you can imagine that having a total resistance of 150 ohms and 15 steps each step will be having a 10 ohm resistance so 10 ohm resistance here 10 ohm resistance here another 10 ohm resistance so this much will be 30 ohms so if we calculate go on adding this by reach while while reaching this point I'll, I'll see that my resistance is 150 ohms and 
this slide wire is is having a resistance of 10 ohms so in addition to this 150 ohm we have a resistance of 10 ohms here this is not 115 volt this is 1.5 volt because this total dial will have a voltage range from 0 to 1.5 volt I'll, I'll tell why it is fixed to 1.5 volt see we i on the onset itself i told that we are moving on with an assumption that we are fixing the working current as 10 milliamps so 10 milliamps means suppose we have if you if i keep the switch at this point then we can tell that the total ohms is 150 ohms and the current is 10 milliamps so 150 into 10 milliamps we can tell that at this point the voltage is 1.5 volt so at this point it is 0 volt it is it is 0.1 volt here it is 0 0.2 0 0.3 volt likewise this is 0.1.2 volt 1.3 1.54 1 and 1.5 so this is how the voltage is changing that is it's having a range from 0 to 1.5 volt keeping in mind that the current fixed is 10 milliamps likewise here also the current flowing is 10 milliamps and it is having a total resistance of 10 ohms now at first we have to uh, first we have to place the switch s in the calibrate position so this is the calibrate position now it is what uh, the picture shows that it's in the calibrate position keeping in the calibrate position see remember the earlier condition that is how to standardize that is there we kept the jockey at 101 point uh, uh, 101.86 centimeter and then we adjusted this rheostat there so that the galvanometer showed null deflection so here also the procedure is more or less the same that is you have to keep you have to keep this dial this this dial in the one volt position why one volt position one volt position will correspond to 100 ohms one volt this how one volt position will correspond to 100 ohms because at while this is 10 ohms 20 ohms 30 ohms likewise when we reach one volt point we reach 100 ohms so we already fixed the current at 10 milliamps so 10 milliamps into 100 ohms will get one volt here okay so that is one thing so we are indeed connecting the standard cell by keeping the switch in the calibrate position so we are actually trying to fix the same voltage by using the dials that is we are trying to fix 1.0186 volt by using the dials so already by using the major dial or the dial switch we have fixed one volt and remaining what is remaining the remaining is 0.0186 volt that is what we have to fix so one volt plus 0.0186 volt will get this 1.0186 volt so that we can do it here that is that we can do it by this dial that is we have to adjust this one so that we'll get a voltage of 0.0186 volt I'll show that uh, I'll, I have, I have uh, okay so that is how it is moving so after po positioning this at 1 volt and after positioning this at 0 0.0186 volt remember that this is having a total range of 0 to 0 0.1 volt so in that range we have to fix it at 0 0.0186 volt so after fixing that we have to adjust this rheostat adjust this rheostat so that this galvanometer will show null deflection so keep this in one volt position keep this in 0 0.0186 volt position adjust this rheostat and make this galvanometer show null deflection by closing this switch and one more thing is there while it reaches the near point of null deflection we can uh, close the switch thereby shorting this 10 uh, kilo ohm resistance the advantage is that by shorting this near the resolution by near near the uh, the uh, balance position or near the null deflection point the current flowing will be very less so we can actually close the switch or short this resistance and advantage is that the galvanometer sensitivity will be increased so near the uh, null deflection point since we increase the sensitivity by closing the switch we can see or zoom the vibration of the galvanometer so that we can achieve perfect null deflection by shorting the key. so whenever we reach the near point of null deflection we can short this key and uh, we can enhance the sensitivity of galvanometer or we are indeed zooming the vibration of galvanometer so that we can achieve 
exact null point and after calibrating we can actually shift this point to the operate point and the, thereby we connect the unknown emf to the potential meter so that after uh, after changing the positions of this one and this one we will we'll ultimately get at one point we ultimately get a null deflection and that null deflection will be will correspond to the unknown voltage so how the unknown voltage it's very simple that is just add the voltages this voltage plus this voltage so at some point this switch will be somewhere here at some point this switch will be somewhere here so this voltage plus this voltage will get the unknown voltage so directly add the dials you will get the unknown emf okay that is one thing so this will act as a coarse adjustment and this will act as a fine adjustment okay so that is all about the Crompton's uh, laboratory dry potentiometer and next we move on to the important thing called a volt ratio box see we have seen that the the maximum voltage that a potentiometer can achieve is uh, can be can can it take is 1.5 volt so probably there are some uh, instruments having maximum range of 1.8 volt but practically the any potentiometer we we assume that it can take a maximum of 1.5 volt so does it mean that we can only give a maximum voltage of 1.5 volt it doesn't mean it does not mean like that we can actually take a box called a volt ratio box we can use a volt ratio box so that we can apply higher voltages than 1.5 volts to measure unknown voltages so any voltage above any unknown voltage above 1.5 volt we can use the volt ratio box so we'll see what is a volt ratio box so this is what is a volt ratio box it's actually a potential divider a simple potential divider and one thing we i have to mention is that at the onset itself i told that dc potentiometers is having one major advantage that it does not load the source that is it actually operates a null deflection method but here if you use a volt ratio box we have to correct that because this is a potential divider potential divider network however versus high resistance this will carry a small amount of current and that current is actually drawn from the source so we cannot still if you are using a volt ratio box we cannot tell that this is a uh, this is not loading the source so this is actually a simple potential divider network having separate tapping points so this tap corresponds to 300 volt so we are applying a voltage close to 300 volt we have to use this terminal and the common terminal if we are using if you are applying a voltage near to 150 volt we have to use this point and common terminal and likewise if it is close to 75 volt we can use it at this point and this point so based on the voltage incoming voltage we have to select the binding posts or the, the the selector switches so that this will be converted to appropriately a voltage in between 0 to 1.5 volt and that is being applied to the potentiometer and that is being applied to the potentiometer so how can we how this is working so that is working with a condition that see suppose suppose we applied some unknown voltage suppose we applied some unknown voltage to the potentiometer uh, to the uh, the volt ratio box we don't know what is an unknown voltage definitely that voltage is less greater than 1.5 voltage that is why that is why we use the volt ratio box suppose we apply a voltage greater than 1.5 volt to a uh, to a volt ratio box and one more thing we we somewhat we know the range that is if it is above 150 volt and suppose we are connecting it to the 300 terminal with respect to the common terminal we are applying we are applying that unknown voltage between this point and this point then what is the case suppose that the potential add to the input of the potentiometer this is the voltage we slide we adjust to the potentiometer and we have seen that that unknown voltage correspond to 0.826 volt in the dc potentiometer i told that dc potentiometer the voltage any voltage we apply will be between 0 to 1.5 volt suppose this is the voltage we get after balancing then that corresponds to 165.2 volt in the volt ratio box so this is the voltage that was applied across the volt ratio box and this was the voltage we got in the dc potentiometer so this corresponding voltage can be converted to 165.2 volt how this is converted because 300 volt corresponds to 1.5 volt then then 0.826 volt will correspond to 165.2 so this is how a volt ratio box works and this volt ratio box have 
its own advantages it, it, it is used in many applications in dc potentiometers thank you